War correspondents knowingly volunteer for risky assignments and receive specialized training in how to ensure their own personal safety. But the past two weeks have thrust local reporters into situations they never could have anticipated. From the moment of the first explosion, reporters suddenly finding themselves covering a terror attack had to make snap decisions about getting the story at the risk to their personal safety. This footage was taken by the Boston Globe, despite widespread fear of additional bombs. Come on, how many times I got to tell you? Oh, 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 oh. Even after Copley Square was secured, reporters had no idea what would happen next. We just saw a SWAT truck with um, armed officers um, making the, the bend there. That's exactly what happened when reports of a possible arrest drove the media to the Moakley courthouse, only to find themselves in the middle of a bomb scare. You have to leave. WHDH's Adam Williams was following police when he suddenly found himself in the middle of the Watertown shootout. We're all taking cover right now behind uh, the different news vehicles. Even the police, though, are taking cover behind their cars. I'm going to run back, get way back. Because Adam, go. I'm take close cover. Comfort right now. Adam, go. Adam, yeah, take go, cover. go, go, go. That admonishment to minimize risk continued throughout the manhunt. Lauren, do you have the ability to at least, uh, and maybe you are, you're doing this, do you have the ability to at least duck behind something as you tell us the story? I just want you to be super safe. As Globe reporter David Abel put it, staying safe wasn't really an option. I was watching this scene with despair, with dread, and it's something I'm never going to forget. Neither will we, thanks to some courageous reporting. You know, it's interesting to look at this because the people who are right there on the scene had to make a quick decision about whether to stay or run. And I think there were a combination. Some reporters got out of there and some just stayed and couldn't, you know, couldn't bring themselves to leave. I was a couple blocks away and my instinct was to go toward it, but I, I, I wasn't right there, you know, when it happened. So I wanted to know what was going on. But if you were right on the scene and you saw those bombs blow in front of you, your instinct might be to run first. And then as for those people who, you know, were in, caught in that firefight, who could have imagined? You know, you're chasing somebody, it's a hijacked car situation, and you think that's going to be a dramatic ending. It rarely ends in a round of, you know, 200, you know, 200 rounds being fired out of, a, you know, out of a couple of guns. Look at Steve Silva. This that is was the, amazing. This is the guy who started a fan site called Boston Dirt Dogs, and it eventually got <laughs> absorbed into the globe. And there he is running toward the yeah, bombing with yeah, his video camera. Yeah. Just remarkable. Uh, we had a student, Taylor Dobbs, who went tearing down to the city with his camera, later ended up in Watertown. Uh, he wrote some very interesting stuff from Medium, a national website, about his experiences. Uh, it's, it's, I'm not even sure that everybody appreciated how much at risk maybe they were at the time. Now they're Phil, thinking about it. You were it. there, too. You were in Watertown. I was there, yeah. I, I was at, at MIT first, uh, at Vassar in Maine, after the police officer had been shot. Suddenly, uh, large numbers of police cars shot toward Watertown. We all, meant, when I say we, many journalists, including myself, we followed the police. Uh, going through red lights, I'm sorry really? to admit. Yes, uh, yeah, <laughs> but uh, it, risking a ticket and more, of course, risking an accident. But more so, when we got to the site in Watertown, uh, right as the reporter for the Boston Globe, and uh, or I think Channel 5 here was talking about, we were right behind the, um, just inside the, the, the perimeter. Uh, and then you, you could, in fact, hear the, uh, the, the, you could hear the shooting. I don't think I was in any danger. I could hear it. I didn't see anything. Mm -hmm. I, I, you could you but you were there you yeah. were there and the idea is that that's an adrenaline that occurs uh, it, you, it's it's something you can't help you think about it in retrospect but you don't always think about it at no. the moment uh, you think about getting the story and you think about trying to understand what was happening what's happening at that at that moment well, that's why I appreciated Kelly Tuthill from Channel 5. Oh, yeah. I'm watching uh, the evening news, yeah, and then that. all of a sudden they break in, Yeah, and and she literally is running and reporting. I am running, yeah, and yeah. Harding is talking to her, <laughs> and he says, what's going on? And she says, I don't know. I hear the gunshots. I hear the gunshots. And here's the line I'll never forget. He asked her something. She said, Ed, this is Boston. It's not Beirut. I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> you know, I was like, oh, my God. I'm just riveted to the screen thinking. And he says, get down, get down. She says, I'm getting down. It was, I, I, I'll just, it was amazing. Yeah, it just, it's just like, this is not a TV movie. Yeah. What the hell is going on here? <laughs> you know. And, you know, and what uh, a lot of this, to, to go back to, to uh, the point you mentioned uh, 
earlier, is a lot of people, a lot of the reporters who were there to cover this, were there to cover yeah. an event that was a very different yeah. kind of a mood. It was, you know, this is going to be a nice, soft, upbeat kind of a feature. And suddenly what they're running into is very different. So uh, just to make that shift of gears yes. mentally, um, do I run to where that explosion is, is not a natural thing for most people. If you're a war correspondent, you go where the bang-bang exactly. is. Right. But right. You had a whole there. group of BU students down too. there. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm.